Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and here are the, well, I guess five different rainbows we created during the June 2020 Chemnitz Dialong live stream. If you missed this live stream, there will be a link in the video description so you can go back and watch me dye these exactly. But in this recap, we're going to talk about the colorways, the colors I used to create them, the techniques that we used and some differences between all of these rainbows you see here. The inspiration this month was a rainbow palette, and I wanted to go less for matching the exact colors and instead pull my rainbow colors and pull my rainbow tools to create a bunch of different kinds of rainbows. And I saw this photo as a possibility for the beautiful colors that we could create. And to honor and support Pride Month and dyeing these rainbows, I have made donations to the Trevor Project and the House of Gigi this month. I talk a lot more about these organizations in the live stream itself at the beginning, but I'll also include some links to them at the top of the video description, uh, so that way you can go and learn more about them. Our live stream started with three palettes three rainbow palettes, a quote classic, uh, which are the rainbow colors I use a lot when playing with acid dye powder. I picked a neon and then a more muted rainbow and we played with all three. And the fun thing about a live stream is that you guys could give input and so that is how we started with the neon. All of the yarn that we dyed is Knit Pick Stroll. This yarn is 75% Superwash Merino, 25% nylon and it is the sock yarn I use the most for my videos, and it's a great blank canvas. In all of the techniques, I used the dry acid dye powders and applied it directly, low immersion to the yarn. And in that, we were able to create a variety of different types of colorways. But in the neon, we used fluorescent fuchsia, fluorescent safety orange, fluorescent lemon, radioactive, frozen, which actually isn't fluorescent, but goes well with the colorway. And then finally, Purple Pop, which is also fluorescent. Now, these colors aren't great for speckling. <laughs> they tend to spread a lot, require a lot more acid and time to dye. And you can get a sense of some of that, um, well, I guess when I say it's not good for speckling, some of the colors break. So we get speckles with Purple Pop, you get these purple speckles with this pink halo. And in radioactive you get some greenish or really I think they're blue speckles and then a little more of a yellow halo. But instead of trying to go for speckles I added the powder and then I moved the yarn to help spread those colors through. There are still some you know close to white patches but I think that it still works well with the brightness of these neon colors. And on the monitor right now, it feels a little bit like they're glowing. Whenever I dye with dry acid dye powders, I love to do this type of yarn mop where you have some yarn that has been pre-soaked in some vinegar and you use this to wipe the excess dye off on your gloves as you're gonna switch between colors. You always want your fingers to be dry when you go into a dye container, but, and you don't want it to be dirty with another color dye, so it's sort of a win-win and you can create these beautiful random colors. Now you can probably see a difference here between our more white base and our more pale gray base. For the pale gray, I actually dyed 300 grams of yarn in a pot with a lot of water using a tiny amount of some gray acid dye, silver gray, and it's a total of 0.2 grams of dye per 100 grams. And that gave us this really pastel gray base. And what's great here is that the colors still feel neon here. The yellow does feel a little more green. That's probably the color that, you know, it took a bit out, but on the yellow also, it still feels like a highlighter yellow in here. So it toned down that brightness a little bit, but not, yeah, it still feels neon and I want to play with these fluorescent colors on more yarn. The best part is that there was no bleeding. There was a tiny bit of pink left in the pan when I took the yarn out, but the colors were, were struck and it went great. Remember, with these fluorescent colors, less is more. You don't want a 1% DOS of these colors. If you try to do that with Purple Pop, it'll bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed, and you don't want that. 
so don't go too overboard but this type of technique worked so well and I'm so thrilled with my quote classic rainbow colors that included cherry bomb saffron spice brilliant yellow emerald green sapphire blue and electric violet I applied the colors randomly in our immersion situation I added the dye let it sit a little bit so we could get a tiny bit of speckles and then patted it down to let it spread but not too far and so this more parody colorway uh, is random with where the colors are and from some of the over mixing there's a little bit that is a little more muted in here but uh, it is beautiful and just to compare these colors to another version of the classic rainbow where I didn't layer the colors quite as much you can see how they feel a little brighter in here but also I didn't use as much dye and we did more speckling on this that was part of a leave no rainbows behind mega time lapse video that came out at the very end of June or the very beginning of July either way that video came out before this recap just like with the neon this time we also had a yarn mop and here you can see a little more speckles and again the trueness of the colors on our bare white base uh, and as I flipped this had multiple rounds of just me wiping my hands on this and again I, I love that and this is something I can do intentionally but it definitely helps me when my focus is on another colorway and I'm wiping my hands as an afterthought versus to intentionally wipe hands on because then I think about where the colors go more so I really like the afterthought aspect of this and it wasn't done in this video but I did do a gray version of this yarn mop in when I did this uh, speckled version that I popped up earlier I did the the gray version of this uh, yarn mop here is all of the yarn that we dyed as a part of the June 2020 Chemnitz dye along live stream and then here are some more rainbows that I dyed later that afternoon as part of a mega rainbow time lapse I have already showed off these two colors but these three uh, were used some more jewel tone colors. I used Dharma, Golden Poppy, Tangelo, Berry Crush, Forest Green, and Dark Navy. And you can watch me dye that yarn in the mega time lapse that I've mentioned. That link will be in the video description and the I card at the top right hand corner of your screen. I'll swap these around for a little more comparison at the end, but right now I want to take a moment and feature your rainbows and the yarn that you dyed as part of the Chemnitz dye along, inspired by a rainbow palette. Uh, there are so many dye types that people were using from food coloring to acid dyes, and each person might look at it slightly differently. And so even when someone is going and creating a rainbow yarn, there are dozens or probably even hundreds of types of rainbow colorways you can create, both in terms of overall technique and in terms of the hues of the actual colors themselves. And I love being able to feature these photos that you shared with me on Instagram and Facebook. And in the future, if you want to be featured in a Chemnitz dialogue, uh, share your yarn that you dye based on the same inspiration photo on Instagram with the hashtag Chemnitz dialogue or on the inspiration photo on the Chemnitz Facebook page. Here we have our intentional colorways versus the mops. We've got neon classic <laughs> and then muted. And I would say that the difference between the neon and the rest is the most extreme. If I look at these classic colors next to our more muted colors, they feel a lot more similar, um, but the differences are they're definitely brighter here in the classic versus the muted but again it's pretty close and there's so many versions of this that I could do still with the colors and I don't even have a complete collection of Dharma acid dye colors so there's just a lot of variety that you can do and again different types of colorways and I was really exploring one technique here, and that was adding dry acid dye powders, low immersion. But you could do this on the counter, you could have liquid and hand paint, and you could layer the colors. There's so many ways that you could do this that are so much fun. 
and I hope that you would have fun exploring uh, many different rainbow techniques in the future. And even with this recap up, please go ahead and continue to share your yarn with me that you dye inspired by any of my videos. I love to see it. Taking a closer look at our yarn mops, on the white base I just did it with the neon colors and the classic and you can really see the difference between our bright fluorescent and the well, I mean, they don't feel muted otherwise, but they feel muted when comparing them to the neon colors. But on the pale gray base, I looked at the muted, what I called our muted rainbow, our classic rainbow, and the neon rainbow. And the difference between these colorways on the gray versus on the white, and I just moved the muted into the middle, um, the differences are extreme. It tones down the contrast to have it on the pastel base, but they still feel rainbow and it doesn't really feel dimmer, I guess, if that makes sense. So, but again, ha starting with different hues, you get different feels with this very similar like yarn mop kind of technique. And so, yeah, I mean, each one of these that you create will be different whether or not you started on the same background color or not. Like these are five different colorways, but it is more reproducible than some of the other random colorways I make because I know the pure hues that I use for each of these. So therefore I can sort of re try to recreate it in a kind of way, but I want to explore this kind of mop intentionally more in the future. The one thing I will definitely add here is that the colorways could be asymmetric. Um, you might, if you made two pairs of socks, they might feel a little different because there isn't necessarily going to be balance of, say, pink all the way through the skein. It doesn't mean that it's a gradient, but it could be asymmetric. So I hope that that makes sense. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and all of this beautiful rainbow yarn is going to make it into the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop at some point if it's not there already. You can always search the shop for the hashtag Chemnitz Dialogue because I do include that on any of these dialogue live stream projects so that way you can go and easily find that yarn. Shopping in my Etsy shop is a great way to support the content. Here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, you get some beautiful yarn that you could watch me dye in my videos, and it helps me get more materials and supplies for future videos. But the absolute biggest way you can support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel is by engaging with these videos. Subscribe to the channel, throw that like, that thumbs up on videos, and leave comments below to let me know what you think. This is the biggest thing that helps the channel grow and I am so thankful for your enthusiasm for these dialogue projects and I can't wait to see what we're going to create in July. I haven't picked a photo yet but if I pick one before I finish editing this recap I will pop it in right here. So don't forget to ring that bell icon so your notifications are on so that way uh, you won't miss when I do a new live stream. Um, in general, I try to do it around the 15th of the month, but uh, things are a little more flexible now that uh, everybody's at home and we're all being more flexible. So anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm not done playing with rainbows. There are going to be a lot more rainbows coming from me onto yarn, and I'm excited to explore it all together. Thank you so much for watching.